Hello viewers, last time we saw the definition of an analytic function and I emphasized that uh, these are uh, important class of functions and we will st and, and the rest of the complex analysis actually concentrates on uh, its study. So, uh, let me remind the viewer uh, the definition of an analytic function. Okay. So, an analytic function is the following a function <coughs> excuse me uh, f of z okay uh, essentially it's a, it's defined on a, a subset of uh, complex numbers uh, is said to be analytic at a point uh, a belongs to uh, domain of f uh, if uh, f is differentiable at every point uh, in B A R, recall what that set is, that is the set of all z such that uh, the modulus of z minus a is strictly less than r okay, uh, for some r positive. Okay. So, a function which is a complex function which is differentiable at every point in a neighborhood of a point A. Okay. So, uh, B A R is called uh, R neighborhood of uh, the point A uh, is said to be analytic at the point A. So, what this does is essentially uh, this gives some room uh, for function uh, where it is differentiable. So, we will see that it has uh, very uh, deep consequences. Okay. So, let me first uh, start by giving some properties of uh, analytic functions. So, here are some properties. So, uh, firstly uh, suppose f and g are analytic at a point a belongs to c, okay. then uh, f plus or minus g okay, uh, of z. Okay. So, these are f of z plus g of z or f of z minus g of z. Okay. So, these functions and um, f times g the function f times g defined as f times g of z is f of z times g of z. Okay. So, this function uh, are also these functions are also analytic. If uh, g of a is uh, not equal to uh, zero, okay. So uh, let me say, yeah. If yeah, why don't I take if g of z is not equal to zero in a neighborhood, okay? In a neighborhood of z then f by g is also analytic at a. So, I should have said analytic at a. So, these, these functions are analytic at a and f by g is also analytic at a provided uh, g of z is not equal to 0. Okay. So, this is useful to uh, construct examples of uh, analytic functions once you know some analytic functions. So, we can add two analytic functions and uh, obtain a new analytic function etcetera. Okay. So, what are uh, some examples? Well, we know we already know many examples of analytic functions. Okay. So, uh, the three classes of functions we saw uh, very early on uh, the constants. Okay. 
polynomials polynomial functions okay uh, and rational functions are all are analytic at every point in their domain okay so uh, so already we have a large class of functions which uh, we know are uh, analytic okay so uh, an analytic function okay f or a function f which is analytic at every point in c okay at so in particular it is differentiable at every point uh, in c okay uh, is called an entire function so an entire function is something which is analytic on all of c so uh, uh, in our example stated above uh, both these constants and uh, the polynomials are entire uh, functions so uh, today we will see uh, another uh, function okay uh, namely the, uh, the exponential function uh, of a complex number okay so this is motivated by uh, the exponential function of real numbers Okay, and uh, we will want to retain the properties of uh, the exponential function of a real numbers when we uh, look at the definition of the exponential function of complex numbers when restricted to the real numbers in the complex plane. Okay, so what we want is uh, we want to define an exponential function. Uh, of complex numbers okay uh, with uh, the properties the following desirable properties uh, firstly um, if f is that function uh, which we want to define uh, we want f to have the property that f of z1 plus z2 is f of z 1 times f of z 2. Recall that the uh, function the exponential function of real numbers has this property the exponentiation of uh, or the uh, exponential function of r 1 plus r 2 is uh, the exponential of uh, r 1 times the exponential of r 2. Okay? And uh, we also want uh, the property that um, f of x is e power x when x is a real number i e it is the real number contained in the complex uh, plane okay so uh, when restricted to a real number con contained in the complex plane we want uh, this new function to tally with the definition of the uh, exponential function that we already know of real numbers Okay. So, with these two desirable properties, we want to make a definition. Let us uh, see uh, what the definition should at least satisfy. Okay. So, in order to do that, what I will do is I will consider f of z, okay, such a function f of z. Uh, of course, it can be written as x plus i y, z can be written as x plus i y. So, by property 1, okay, by property 1, uh, this should be f of x times f of i y. Okay. Uh, so, uh, and f of x now x is a real number. So, f of x should now by property to be e power x okay. and then we have f of i y. So, such an f of z should look like e power x times f of i y 
for uh, z equals x plus i y. Okay. So, further what we require is that uh, well f of i y okay, uh, if we write that as a of y plus i times b of y. So, I am writing uh, the function f of i y this piece uh, um, into its real and imaginary uh, parts. Okay. So, I am separating it into its real and imaginary parts. Okay. So, then what I get is uh, f of uh, z should look like e power x a of y plus i times e power x b of y. Okay. So, uh, then uh, since we want to define this exponential function in such a way that uh, it is differentiable everywhere. Uh, in the complex plane. Okay. So, we also desire that this function will be uh, uh, should be differentiable at every point in the complex plane. So, uh, so in particular the real and imaginary parts of this uh, function should uh, satisfy the Cauchy Riemann equation. So, uh, since these should satisfy the Cauchy Riemann equations let us write them down uh, u of x comma y in this case is e power x a of y and v of x y the imaginary part is e power x b of y. Okay. So, uh, u x the partial derivative of u with respect to x gives us e power x a of y uh, and u y is e power x a prime of y okay. uh, v x is the partial derivative of v with respect to x is e power x b of y and the partial derivative of v with respect to uh, y is e power x b prime of y. Okay. So, by uh, by C R equations we should have uh, a of y should equal b prime of y. Okay. That is because uh, your u x should equal v y okay. and uh, we want a prime of y should equal uh, b of y. That is because or rather a prime of y should equal minus b of y. Okay. That is by the, uh, the second equation that uh, u y is minus v x. Okay. So, uh, then from these two we can conclude that we can substitute a of y in here okay, and say that b prime b double prime of y should be equal to minus b of y. So, want b of b double prime of y to be minus b of y and we know uh, such a function or uh, what kind of function satisfy uh, this relation. Okay. So, uh, you would want b to be uh, b of y to be uh, well alpha cosine y plus beta sin y. Okay. And so, and then a of y now will be uh, b prime of y by this relation. Okay by this relation here. So, a of y should be uh, minus alpha sin y plus beta cosine y. Okay. And further we also uh, know that f of x tallies with e power x. So, in particular uh, a of 0. So, f of 0 is 1 okay, is e power 0. Um, cosine 0 okay, plus i uh, times e power 0 sin 0. Okay. So, that should give us uh, 1. Okay. So, okay, well, so what I want to say is, uh, so we know that uh, a of a of uh, 0 should be 1 and b of 0 should be 0. Okay. So, uh, 
a of 0 equals 1 tells us that uh, minus alpha sin 0 plus beta times uh, co cosine 0 is 1 which implies uh, beta should be 1. Okay? And uh, so, then uh, substituting beta equals 1 in uh, b of 0 equals 0, we get uh, b of 0 is alpha times cosine 0 plus uh, 1 times sin 0. Okay? So, we get uh, this should be 0. Okay? So, uh, alpha should be 0. Uh, so, uh, we get b of y is sin y and uh, a of y is uh, cosine y. Okay. So, uh, we want f of z, okay. we want f of z uh, to be defined as e power x cosine y plus i times e power x sin y. Okay? And hence, we will define, so define uh, the exponential function okay, of a complex number. z as e power z. So, e will stand for z alternatively also written as e x p of z okay, e x p of z. Okay. So, define that to be uh, e power x cosine y plus i times e power x sin y where z equals x plus i. Okay. So, we define the exponential function owing to the motivation that we have seen uh, so far. Okay. So, uh, we will see that indeed it satisfies many of the properties which are counterparts uh, of the uh, real exponential function. Okay. So, here are some properties. Okay. So, uh, firstly f is so, let me note down the motivation uh, as follows uh, e power e power z 1 plus z 2 is indeed uh, e power z 1 times e power z 2. Okay? This was one of the properties we started off with okay? and with this definition uh, now this holds. Okay? So, uh, let us check that. Okay? So, e power z 1 plus z 2 is uh, if I write z 1 as x 1 plus i y 1 and z 2 as x 2 plus i y 2. Okay. This is e power x 1 plus x 2 plus i times y 1 plus y 2. Okay. And uh, so, we get this is by the definition of the exponential function e power x 1 plus x 2. Uh, times cosine of y 1 plus y 2 plus i times e power x 1 plus x 2 times uh, sin of y 1 plus y 2. Okay? And one can verify that e power z 1 times e power z 2 uh, will tally with uh, this. Okay? So, let us see that e power z 1 is e power x 1 plus i y 1 times e power, e power z 2 is e power x 2 plus i y 2. Okay. So, now let us use the definition of the exponential function. This is uh, e power x 1 times uh, cosine y 1 plus i sin y 1 uh, times uh, e power x 2 times uh, cosine y 2 plus i sin y 2. 
Okay, and we know that when we multiply uh, cosine y1 plus i sin y1 with cosine y2 plus i sin y2, uh, we do get cosine y1 plus y2 plus i sin y1 plus y2. Okay, uh, and then this is the real exponential function now, e power x1 times e power x2. So we do get a e power x1 plus x2. Okay, so uh, of course uh, in this definition, okay, these are these are the real exponential functions here. Okay, so we already understand them. So indeed, uh, we we get uh, this property. Okay, the property which we were motivated by. Okay, and likewise, um, if if x uh, is a real number, okay, uh, real number which is contained in the complex plane, okay, then uh, e power x is the complex exponential function e power x. Okay, so let me write that. Well, our very uh, artificially let me write that e x p of x plus i times 0, because that is what a real number in the complex plane looks like. This is equal to um, by the definition e power x, where e power x is the real exponential function now times uh, cosine 0 plus i sin 0. Okay. So, this is by definition. Okay. So, uh, by definition. So, this indeed tallies with the real exponential function okay? uh, and there are other properties uh, which follow. Okay? So, um, what are uh, some other properties? The modulus of uh, the exponential function okay, uh, is essentially uh, the e raised to x, where uh, where e is the uh, real exponential function. Now, I need not distinguish between real exponential function uh, here, because it tallies whenever we have a real number, it tallies with the real exponential function. Okay? So, the modulus of e power z is e power x, because the modulus of the complex number cos y plus i sin y uh, is 1. Okay? And uh, the fourth of the properties is that um, e power z the way we have defined it is never equal to 0. Okay? That is because uh, cosine y plus i sin y okay, uh, is never equal to 0, uh, cosine, because cosine y and I, uh, sin y are not simultaneously 0 for any real number y. Okay? So, that is easy to see and then e power i y is uh, cosine y plus i sin y. That is because you can just take uh, x to be 0 okay, and you get that. And uh, the sixth property that uh, if you have e power z equals alpha a complex number, okay, uh, then um, if you look at this equation where alpha is a complex number, uh, this has this equation infinitely many solutions. Z. Okay. So, there are infinitely many complex numbers z, uh, which satisfy uh, e power z equals alpha, where alpha is a fixed complex number. Okay. So, how do you see this? Well, what we can do is let us consider an example here. Okay. So, let us look at e power z equals uh, 2 plus 2 i for example. Okay. So, <coughs> what I can do is uh, uh, I will write 2 plus 2 i okay, in its polar form. Okay. So, what I get is uh, this is 2 root 2, well two, this is 2 times 1 plus i. So, this is 2 root 2 times 1 by root 2 plus i by root 2. 
okay so which is 2 root 2 times cosine pi by 4 for example plus i sin pi by 4 okay or this is likewise equal to 2 root 2 times cosine 2 n pi plus pi by 4 because cosine and sine are of period uh, 2 pi uh, I can write this as sine of 2 n pi plus pi by 4 okay so um, so that gives me uh, I mean that at least looks like uh, in the form this is in the form uh, e power x times cosine y plus i sin y okay so uh, of course here n is any uh, integer okay so now if i take e power x to be equal to take x e power x to be equal to 2 root 2 i e take x to be the real logarithm of uh, 2 root 2 okay and uh, take y to be equal to 2 n pi plus pi by 4 okay then uh, e power z equals uh, e power uh, x plus i y okay x ln 2 root 2 plus i times uh, 2 n pi plus pi by 4 okay will be equal to uh, your 2 plus 2 i okay for n belongs to z. So, since there are infinitely many um, integers uh, we can conclude that there are infinitely many solutions like that uh, to the equation uh, e power z is 2 plus 2 i okay and likewise this procedure can be uh, repeated for any complex number alpha any non zero complex number alpha okay so i should say alpha not equal to 0 alpha belongs to c okay because e power z is not equal to 0 so uh, this procedure can be uh, uh, repeated um, so when e power uh, when alpha is not 0 this number here which appears to the front is not 0 okay so you can take its logarithm uh, it is a positive real number really so you can take its logarithm and uh, the argument of cosine okay uh, the argument of the complex number alpha uh, essentially serves as the imaginary part of the solution z and since the argument as we saw earlier has infinitely many values uh, you can uh, you can conclude that that equation has infinitely many solutions okay so uh, let's see another property this is number 7 uh, so e power z is entire function okay that is because uh, that is by design essentially we uh, wanted to construct the exponential function such that uh, e power z is differentiable everywhere. Remember we uh, used the Cauchy Riemann equations to, uh, to construct something which motivated our definition. Okay? So, the real and imaginary parts of this function e power z will uh, now obviously satisfy the Cauchy Riemann equations and uh, at every point in the complex plane uh, and hence and of course, it is also and uh, these partial derivatives are continuous. So, we can conclude that e power z uh, is differentiable at every point in the complex plane. So, it is an entire function furthermore, the differentiation of e power z okay, uh, e power z prime is equal to e power z. Okay. So, let us just uh, use the fact that there are various ways to find the differentiation of an analytic function. Uh, so, if f is an analytic function recall that if 
f is an analytic function with real and imaginary parts u and i v, then uh, f prime of z uh, one of the ways to obtain it is take the partial derivative of u with respect to x plus i times the partial derivative of v with respect to x. Okay. So, uh, e power z uh, since this was e power x cosine y plus i times e power x sin y, it is obvious that uh, e power z prime we already proved that this is differentiable. So, we need to find the differentiation this is uh, e power x cosine y which is the partial derivative of e power x cosine y with respect to x plus i times e power x sin y e power x sin y is the partial derivative of e power x sin y with respect to x. Okay. So, this is once again e power z. So, e power z is differentiable at every point in the complex plane and its differentiation is itself. And uh, of course, we can quickly observe that this is a periodic function with a period uh, 2 pi i. Okay. So, if you have 2 pi i times n, okay, so this is we observed um, e power x plus i y plus i times 2 pi n. So, this gives you e power x uh, cosine 2 pi n plus y plus i sin 2 pi n plus y. Okay. So, of course, this is equal to e power x cosine y plus i sin y, okay, which is e power z. Okay. So, e power z has a period 2 pi i. Okay. Okay. So, these are some of the properties of uh, the exponential function. Um, next, let us uh, look at the mapping properties of uh, this exponential function. By mapping properties, I mean uh, let us try to see how this exponential function uh, maps uh, certain sets, certain important sets in the complex plane uh, to, uh, you know, to its range. Okay. So, I um, will explain. So, here we will consider the domain of uh, the exponential function namely all of the complex plane okay. and let us try to see that uh, see what it does to some subsets as follows. Okay. So, let us consider the following uh, nice subsets. Firstly, let us observe uh, what it does to the x axis or the real axis. Okay. So, this function this transformation is e power x e power z rather. So, when you consider the x axis or uh, the real axis, okay, then the image of the x axis uh, uh, well we know the um, exponential function tallies with the real exponential function when we restrict ourselves to real numbers. So, what we get is uh, positive real axis. Okay. So, the exponential function the real exponential function is uh, 1 to 1 and on to the positive uh, real axis okay. when you restrict uh, to the well um, the real exponential function uh, is has that property. Okay. So, the image is the positive real axis. Okay. So, let me denote this with the image of that being uh, the positive real axis. Okay. So, of course, you skip 0. Okay. 0 is not in the image of the exponential complex exponential function. So, now, uh, the second subset we will consider is 
the y axis let us examine where the y axis goes to. So, if you consider the y axis uh, its equation is x equals 0. So, e power z will now equal uh, cosine y plus i sin y because x is 0 e power x is 1. So, that you get e power z is cosine y plus i sin y. Now, these are points cosine y comma sin y for y real number for y any real number. So, its image is going to be so the image of uh, the y axis is going to be uh, points on the unit circle. So, that is because that is because uh, the points cosine y comma sin y okay, are on the unit circle are um, okay, the set of all cosine y comma sin y such that y belongs to r okay, is essentially equal to the set of all z belongs to complex plane with mod z the modulus of z equals 1. Okay. So, uh, here equality means uh, the equality of uh, points in R 2 uh, with the e with the points in the complex plane. Okay. So, the ima image of y axis is the uh, unit circle. And let us now examine the image of any horizontal line. Okay. So, a horizontal line we have seen that the image of x axis is positive real axis. Okay. Uh, the image of a horizontal line, okay. horizontal line the equation is uh, y is constant. Okay. So, e power z will look like e power x times cosine y naught plus i sin y naught. Okay. So, x varies okay. x assumes all the positive uh, real numbers and cosine y naught plus i sin y naught uh, essentially determines uh, the direction in which the positive real numbers proceed. Okay. So, to uh, give an example, uh, example if you look at y naught equals pi by 4, y equals pi by 4 constant line y equals pi by 4. Okay. So, you are looking at e power z equals e power x times 1 plus i by root 2. Okay. So, uh, this is a real multiple e power x is a positive real number. So, uh, e power z is a real multiple of the complex number 1 plus i by root 2. Okay. So, if you consider, so once again let me take uh, another color. Okay. So, for this horizontal line, okay, let me call that y equals pi by 4 for example. Okay. Then, the image of this is going to be, uh, well here is let us suppose 1 plus i by root 2, it is at it is on the 45 degree uh, line, this is 45 degrees pi by 4, okay. it is on the line which makes 45 degrees with the positive uh, x axis. Okay. So, uh, now we scale this, okay. so uh, we multiply this 1 plus i by root 2 with any positive real number. So, if the positive real number is less than 1, you bring it closer to the origin okay. and if the positive real number is greater than 1, you throw it away from the origin. So, the image of this uh, yellow line is going to be this yellow line. Okay. So, it is the positive or it is the half ray uh, starting at 0 and uh, going all the way up till infinity uh, except the, that the point 0 is missing. Okay. So, the image of 
such a horizontal line will be uh, set of all uh, z okay set of all z such that uh, such that uh, e power well how do you say it's better described uh, geometrically i'll say this is a half ray uh, at an angle argument of uh, z okay with the positive x axis okay so uh, without the zero without the origin itself okay so of course i have given a um, set definition here as well so you can say it is the set of all z such that uh, such that z equals e power x or a real number times cosine of uh, y not plus i sin y not okay where r equals uh, e power x okay so the image is set of all said right, that way okay so uh, that's the image of a horizontal line likewise let's inspect uh, where does a vertical line go to the image of a vertical line has the equation x equals x naught okay so e power z then transforms to this line to e power x naught which is a fixed real number now fixed positive real number times uh, cosine y plus i sin y and as we already discussed the point cosine y comma sin y in r2 uh, is on a circle okay is on the unit circle so now the point e power x naught times a point on the unit circle okay is essentially the expansion of the unit circle or the contraction of the unit circle depending upon whether e power x naught is greater than 1 or less than 1 okay so if you if we go back to the picture let me take a, a yellow line again or a or a yeah, yellow line again and if we look at uh, a vertical line like that okay and whose equation is x equals x naught Okay. then depending upon whether x naught is greater than uh, 1 or less than or depending upon whether uh, e power x naught is greater than 1 or less than 1. So, since uh, we see that x naught is positive in this case it is uh, beyond this point 0. Okay. So, e power x naught will be greater than 1. So, the image of this yellow line will be a circle it will be a circle of radius greater than 1 or exactly uh, it will be a circle of radius e power x naught. Okay, so, the image of this vertical line is that circle. Uh, so, now let us uh, look at one more important subset I did not complete the description here the image is uh, a circle of radius uh, e power x naught centered at the origin okay. and uh, if x naught is less than 0 then circle has radius less than 1 okay and if x naught is greater than 0 radius is greater than 1 okay. so uh, next we have uh, the image of uh, a strip 
So, now we will look at image of regions. Okay. So, uh, image of a, uh, a strip 0 less than or equal to y less than 2 pi. Okay. So, this is essentially the set z equals x plus i y such that uh, y is in between 0 and 2 pi. Okay. So, this is the collective image of all the horizontal lines lying between uh, y equals 0 and y equals 2 pi including y equals 0, but not including y equals 2 pi. So, let me go back to the picture. Okay. So, uh, let me use a, a pen of some color. Okay. So, fine point. So, suppose this is this is a clearly not to scale, but let us suppose that is y equals 2 pi okay. and the region now I am talking about is this hashed region here. Okay. These it is the set of all horizontal lines which go from uh, 0 to 2 pi okay. all the horizontal lines which go from 0 to 2 pi and uh, so it is the collective image of all the horizontal lines and as we discussed. Uh, the image of a horizontal line is a half ray. Okay. So, now as these horizontal lines move from y equals 0 to y equals 2 pi, you get half rays which go from angle 0 with the positive x axis to the angle 2 pi uh, with the positive x axis. So, you essentially get all the rays, all the half rays which uh, span the entire complex plane, but they of course, miss uh, the point 0 itself. Okay. So, the image of such a strip is all of the complex plane I need to shift. Okay. So, this is all of the complex plane minus the point 0 okay. and this reflects. Uh, okay. So, then uh, before I say make that statement let me say that the image of okay, likewise likewise uh, the image of a strip 2 pi less than equal to y strictly less than 4 pi okay, is also uh, all the complex numbers minus 0. That is because now you will uh, begin at uh, the angle 2 pi with the positive x axis which will essentially be the positive x axis okay. and then uh, you will take all the half rays half infinite rays starting at 0 okay, and go around until angle 4 pi with the positive x axis. So, it will essentially span all of the complex plane okay, except uh, the point 0. Okay. So, uh, this reflects the periodic nature of uh, the exponential function. So, the you can you can split the entire complex plane into these strips of uh, of uh, y uh, ranging from 0 to 2 pi okay and you can imagine the complex plane to be a stack of these strips and the image of each of the strip is uh, all of the uh, complex plane minus the point 0 okay so what is also important is that uh, the image of this strip onto c minus 0 uh, which is all of the range of range of uh, e power z okay uh, this is 1 to 1 okay the function e power z is 1 to 1 on this strip okay which is not a feature of the exponential function in general okay so for example we showed already that e power z equals alpha okay has infinitely many solutions so e power z is not a one to one function but on this when we you restrict the exponential function onto th any of these kind of strips then the function e power z is uh, one to one okay and uh, then when you restrict uh, the exponential function onto the strip there is a possibility of defining the inverse function of e power z which we which we would want to call the logarithm Okay, but that we will do later. Uh, so, for now, uh, we will continue with uh, these mapping properties okay. and let me say that the image one can observe of uh, the left half plane i e 
the plane uh, the set of all z equals x plus i y such that x is strictly less than 0. Okay. So, left to the y axis okay, the left half plane the image of this is uh, the unit disc set of all z such that Zero strictly less than mod z strictly less than one. Okay, so this is unit disk minus the point zero. Of course, the point zero is not in the image of e power z. Okay, and uh, seven the image of the right half plane is going to be uh, things outside the unit disk set of all z equals x plus i y such that x is strictly greater than 0. The image of this is going to be set of all z such that the modulus of z is strictly greater than 1. Okay. So, these are the mapping properties of the exponential function. Okay. So, I will stop here today.